Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about mindset, leadership, and building a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the head coach of our University of Hawaii baseball team. He is Coach Rich Hill, and today we are going beyond baseball. Hey, Coach Rich, welcome to Beyond the Lines. How's it, everybody? Honored to be on your show, Rusty. Thank you so much. Coach Rich, I absolutely love you. You have such an amazing <laughs> personality. We are so lucky to have you as our baseball coach at the University of Hawaii. And can you first share about some of the roles you had before joining UH? Well, first of all, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm uh, honored to be the baseball coach here, to serve uh, as the head baseball coach here at the University of Hawaii. Uh, it is a tremendous uh, honor and blessing, you know, for me and my family. Uh, I started out, you know, coaching, uh, when I was 24, I signed that contract, you know, just out of professional baseball and teaching high school and, uh, you know, was lucky enough to be at Cal Lutheran University uh, for my, the first six years of my coaching career. And uh, Bob Doring, the, the AD, you know, liked me for some reason. I was in his classes a couple years prior and it was a, uh, a part time job and we did some special things at Cal Lutheran. Um, played for the national championship in 92, kind of, you know, culminated there, went on to the University of San Francisco uh, from uh, 94 to 98, did some great things there. And, uh, you know, from then, you know, really was blessed to go uh, to the University of San Diego. And that's really, you know, where, you know, people, I guess, would know me from. That's 23 years uh, on the hilltop there at uh, San Diego and coached some great players, been around some great coaches, and uh, then, you know, really, you know, had this great opportunity to come to the University of Hawaii and, and build off what Coach Les and Coach Trapp, you know, had built, and maybe take it one step further and a chance to impact this great community, which has meant so much uh, to my family and myself, and here we are. So it's awesome. Well, I mean, I, I have no doubt you're going to take it to higher levels. And, and yeah, you know, Coach Rich, um, the last game of this past season, Ryan Tanaka had invited uh, Judge Peter Fong, myself, and some other guests to be in the VIP room behind home plate. And that's where we met you. I mean, that was such an epic game, right? Oh, my gosh. You know, I guess UC Santa Barbara uh who perennially you know the last decade you know has been a top of the big west um you know and we had beaten them two nights you know prior it's standing room only you know like the old days you know there's four deep up on the concourse it's 46 100 people screaming let's go bows you know the place is just kind of shaking uh we're up nine to two they come back and i think take the lead 12 to 10 it just had everything in that game, you know, and it kind of symbolized, you know, our season. And then in the bottom of the 10th inning, I believe, I think it went extra innings, maybe the bottom of the ninth, you know, uh, lead off guy on and uh, Stone Meow, local boy, you know, uh, from the state of Hawaii, Big Island, uh, hit his second home run in as many nights, I believe, uh, to have this walk-off win, you know, frenzied crowd everybody stayed late our guys are walk off it's senior night um what a way to to end the season and really uh symbolize you know where we uh have come you know uh as a program here and what we're really about well coach rich i i was so excited to see all of that i mean from the first pitch all the way to that home run and you know that uh, I want to ask you about the UH baseball stadium because it's such a nice stadium. I mean, it's beautiful. And the fans, I mean, just, I mean, they get into it and there's such great energy, right? Absolutely. You know, Coach Les uh, Murakami, you know, had the vision, you know, uh, 40 years ago, uh, you know, in, in 1984 to build this, you know, 
and the state of Hawaii and the legislature and everybody got behind it. And, you know, at the time it was the state of the art uh, college baseball stadium. Um, you know, through the years, it has withstood the test of time. You know, it's got that cement feel. It's a huge footprint. Uh, when you walk in, it's kind of, it's just still just jaw dropping, right? You go up on that concourse and you hear the music and you see the beautiful field and the palm trees and the green. It's just crazy. And then, you, you, you know, you, you add the fans, you know, and, and, and I really hope the fans are, you know, are, are listening here because it is very, very special. And I liken it to a St. Louis Cardinals game. I played with the Cardinals, you know, back in 1985, and they're known as the number one fan base in Major League Baseball. And, and really because they appreciate good baseball. They understand what a good play is, what a good pitch is, what a good at-bat is. They actually clap, you know, for somebody that makes a great play on the other team. And our fans are like that. You go to an LSU game or an Oregon State game, and those fans are mean, you know. And, and if you lose, they let you know it. And here, win or lose, our fans stay to the end. They want to see us do the shakahama and pay homage to the great fans of Hawaii. And they appreciate the good play. And they come down and they wait for the players, win or lose, to get autographs and uh, have the keiki, you know, experience, you know, these great role models. So uh, we talk about that in recruiting with our, with our kids from the mainland and say, and say hey, man, this, this is a fan base like no other, you know, and the closest resemblance is St. Louis Cardinals fans. So that is a great comparison. Uh, and something to be very proud of, you know, if you're a fan here in Hawaii. Yeah, it's it's all about behaving and acting with class. And amazing, and Coach Rich. I want to ask you about your team's culture of excellence. What are what are some disciplines? What are some what are you trying to instill in your team to really strive for that superior culture of excellence? You know, it, it's uh, we define. Uh, culture, you know, our culture. And that's probably the number one thing on the ladder, Rusty. I mean, uh, that's the one, that's the one thing that's controllable, you know, and you know about, you know, the controllables and, and the uncontrollables, and how we focus on that. And really we define it as the way we do things around here, you know, and that's kind of plastered, you know, in, in a few places. So uh, we call it above the line and below the line, you know, so if we're going to go to the weight room, you know, what does above the line look like, you know, and it looks like everybody's wearing the same thing. Everything's tucked in, you know, nobody's got bed head and we've all got water bottles. And I mean, it's loud, right. And it's enthusiastic. And you know, the bow warriors, the baseball team is in there getting after it. Nobody's sitting down. Nobody's yawning. Everybody's up high fiving you know, for that hour. What does above the line look like in training, you know, in practice? Same kind of thing. There's a level of enthusiasm that is expected. That's a controllable. You know, we also call it level 10, right? So we want to be level 10, right, in our controllable factors. And controllable factors are directly related to excellence. You say, you know, going good to great, Jim Collins, you know, the whole thing, right? So Rusty Kimura, his book, you know, talking about a, a culture, or a team or a company that is really good, how do they go from good to superior? You know, I mean, this is 22 championships that you won, bro. I mean, that's amazing, right? So we're trying to get to that point too. Um, we talk about level 10 and we talk about above the line. What does it look like in the dugout? What does it look like in at bat? What does your body language look like? Because we all know that body language screams, it doesn't whisper. So those kinds of things, really, really focusing on the controllables, being level 10 and being above the line in all of those controllables. I love hearing those insights, Coach Rich. And, you know, when players start, you know, really young playing baseball, I mean, they start because it's fun. And then as they get good, um, competition becomes fun. Now, when I'm watching your team, they look like they're really having fun. I mean, they're just, they love each other. W what do you do to really keep things fun? I mean, you mentioned part of that just er just a little while ago, but what do you really do to keep things fun in a, such a competitive um, environment? There's two guys, Jim Leland, you know, who's one of the best baseball managers, uh, you know, ever, you know, uh, talked about, 
creating an environment of enthusiasm. You know, and I, I, one of my greatest mentors, Dave Snow, who's at Long Beach State, went to the College World Series with a couple different teams, uh, talked about the, the same thing. And if you look at some of these cultures, uh, especially in pro sports, you know, and our companies now, uh, they really, really focus on connection, right? They, they focus on enthusiasm, you know? I think one of the greatest TV shows, if not the greatest three season show was Ted Lasso, you know, and uh, creating that environment, you know, where it's fun to come to work. It's fun to come to the clubhouse. You know, baseball is a hard game, you know, and, you know, when you're striving to, to a, you know, reach that goal, strive to reach the summit, like the queen said, you know, there's some tough things that happen along those ways. So, you know, these great, uh, sports teams will have a ping pong table, you know, right as you walk in, you know, to the, uh, to the clubhouse. Other, you know, teams will have a, a Nerf basketball thing. Other, other cultures will have a, you know, the, the NCAA tournament basketball, you know, pool. So it's, it's these other little things that, you know, really are fun, don't mean anything, but yet they really, really do. So I think, you know, being level 10 at uh, our enthusiasm, you know, not only for just playing the game of baseball, but for winning uh, and for accomplishing our goal. We have music, you know, in every drill uh, that we do. We try to compete uh, in every drill that we do. We add little things like Shaka Shaka uh, Tea Express, you know, boba smoothies for the winners. You know, we have plaques for the winners. We have all these kinds of things, these little motivational things that just kind of keep it super fun, you know, because you just said that not many people do that that they get that is, you know, at an early age, you figure out that you're pretty good at a skill, whether it be music, sports, art. And then you start getting into that. You kind of like it because you're good at it. And then the competition part of it becomes fun, you know, and that's where we are. You know, we're at that level 10, the highest level of division one that you can go to. Um, and we strive for that. So I'm, I was really glad to hear you say that. Well, Coach Rich, uh, I mean, I am one million percent convinced that you are the king of enthusiasm i mean I, you get me excited i mean i love i love when we were able to talk and we you know we can talk for three hours i mean we've done that <laughs> right oh yeah we can go forever now, coach rich i want to ask you about uh, pitching i mean obviously pitching is one of the most important parts of baseball um what are some of the key details that you focus on to help your pitchers uh, improve, at, I mean, to really go from good to superior? Well, you know, we, we have a, a, a great pitching coach here, Keith Zuniga, you know, that we just hired. He was the interim head coach at New Mexico State. He's known for, you know, taking these guys who may not have been drafted high or kind of projects and really molding them into uh, top draft picks and real, real top performers at this level um <clears throat> so the the mechanical you know part of pitching uh you know it, it i really leave to keith you know and matthew troop who was here the first two years uh is just a unbelievable communicator you know what i really want to emphasize we sit down with keith and you know and say hey, th these are the things that are really important to me and uh you know some of those things would be like tempo you know, uh, in a delivery, both in the windup and the stretch. Um, I really believe in balance, being balanced over the rubber, you know, having a really good separation, um, you know, point, um, and really, really delivering it out in front to create a consistent release point. You know, those things are important to me. Uh, and then I really get into controlling the running game. We got to be a one, two, five or below uh, to the home plate. Really believe in picking off uh, guys at first base. Uh, and second base. But what I really, really get into, right, is the mental aspect uh, of performance. You know, and I really consider myself a mental skills coach that happens to be a baseball coach, you know. So picture this, Rusty. You know, are you a, are you a Skittles guy or Starburst guy? What do you like? Well, I like both, actually. <laughs> All right, so let's say, yeah. So let's say, and that's a good question for our viewers. Some of them are at home right now going, God, Skittles or Starburst? Skittles or Starburst, right? So we pretend, okay, we're going to put one of those tropical Skittles right and stick it right on the glove of the catcher, right? 
And that's all that we're thinking about. I come from San Diego, Hawaii is a big, you know, Oahu's big military uh, island, aim small, miss small, sniper school. Um, same thing with the pitcher. So really everything just goes away, right? And it's just heavy process oriented on driving the ball, be aggressive to your lanes and driving it through the tropical skittle, right? So now our pitchers have this vision, right, of that. And the body really organizes itself. The brain, you know, is just, uh, it's the last frontier and it's the key, really. So the body's going to organize itself if you can just, you know, really, really focus on that. What we don't want to happen is, okay, we're focusing on all the radar guns behind. My girlfriend's in the stands. My parents flew in from the big island. Uh, I have to impress my coaches, my teammates. I want to win the game. I want to strike the guy out. All goes away. Tropical Skittle, let's go and be aggressive on that. So things like that uh, is where I really get into it with the pitchers. Now, Coach Rich, I mean, obviously the pitcher-catcher relationship is huge. I mean, it's super critical. Uh, right. What are your thoughts about the pitcher-catcher relationship? One word, trust. Uh, the pitcher, I think if he really trusts that catcher, and we've got a great one here, Dallas Duarte. You know, uh, you know, local boy from the Big Island um, who can steal strikes a little bit, uh, who the pitcher can really feel comfortable with throwing what we call a stretch change, stretch curveball, which is going to be in the dirt, try to get the batter to chase, right? That that catcher is going to swing around and be able to block everything. Um, so the pitcher has that trust in the catcher. And uh, the other thing is connection right? And respect because the catcher is going to make five mound trips uh, between three and five per game and really be that coach because we're, we have this limited amount. So that pitcher has to trust and respect that catcher to listen to him, uh, to get settled down a little bit, to get back into the zone, to walk around and to kind of push that reset button. So I think that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, I love hearing these insights and, and coach Rich, uh, let's talk about batting. I mean, what, what are some things that you have your players focus on to improve their batting? Well, again, we've got a great uh, hitting coach here, local boy, uh, Dave Nakama, you know, out of Kaiser has been everywhere. Head coach at San Jose state, been to Stanford up at the university of Washington. We were lucky to get him uh, back. He gets our guys dialed in. Really. We call him the swing doctor, you know, and, uh, the 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 gist of it without I mean I could talk for 45 minutes to an hour but we just want to be on time and on plane you know and I mean that really means getting your lower body in position to hit right before you start your swing and when we start our swing and we want to have that really good spine angle and I'm still one of those guys barrel above the hand not all this you know launch angle stuff drop the barrel swing uphill um, it's still kind of a Ted Williams, Tony Gwynn, uh, really, really generate bat speed from the legs. So everything kind of revolves, uh, and goes from there now. Okay. Mental skills coach that happens to be a baseball coach. We want to step into the, I mean, this is it. Step into the box with a clear mind and get our a swing off. Now, if we're in the right frame of mind to really create good vision from the pitcher's release point, right? then everything else goes away. It's like on autopilot, you know, we've trained so much in the batting cages, you know, uh, in batting practice that the body's going to organize itself. We're just going to get into that right frame of mind where I have a clear mind. Um, I'm going to get my A swing off and I'm going to see the ball and really, really track it. So it's a, it's a simplified approach, right? That creates real good plate discipline and A swings, uh, and, and really good barrel contact. Well, you and I both know simplicity is key, and, and that's uh, that leads to big-time success. And Coach Rich, I, you have both of my books. I, I want to ask you, what are some of the concepts or some of the, the um, just some of the stories or things that stood out to you in it? Well, I think, you know, just organically, um, you know, I've, I've had your books for a couple of weeks and I'm just, you know, I'm going through it and devouring it. The thing that stands out, like I said, organically, and I've told you, is there's a lot of information um, that is very 
simple. It's it's very, in a simplified approach. I mean, if if you're doing any kind of activity and want to be great, you want to make a bunch of money, right? If you want to be the best singer, if you want to be an artist, a good volleyball player, baseball, football, then both of these books are like must reads, right? It's everything that it, that all of these greatest people in the world writing all these books. It's like condensed. So that's the first thing. It's like an inch thick. Boom! You can go, you know, right at it. I love the part, you know, about choices, you know, because as I talk to young people, you know, the choices are really going to um, define, you know, uh, who you are uh, and where you're going to be. Um, I, I'd like to take that one step further. I think that we all have thousands of choices every day, but then you, you go to that next level of the video game is what I call it, decisions. All right. Do I decide to, you know, take a hit of that bong? You know, do I decide to get into that? Can I say that on this show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be real. All right. Because that's what I'm dealing with, man. You know, do I, am I going to take that drink of alcohol? Am I going to get in that car with somebody who's been drinking? What kind of decisions am I going to make with my girlfriend or boyfriend? Uh, what about nutrition? What about sleep? What about training? What about a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset? So um, decisions, I got to make it a, a real action decision on that. So the choices part is uh, amazing. The habits, you know, um, about developing really good habits. Um, that that really is is pretty much everything, you know. Can you be self-disciplined enough to, you know, develop these habits? And then when you practice, you know, these purposeful practice type of habits, that leads to the success on the diamond, on the gridiron, or on the court. I love the part about risk, you know. And I've been talking to my players about risk for 30 years. I was presented with a challenge to come to UH. Are you going to mic drop and leave this unbelievable idyllic life and financially stable and built a stadium and we're going to win forever and I'm barbecuing in the backyard every day of my life? Absolute comfort for absolute discomfort, you know, at UH and a completely new recruiting cycle and budget uh, challenges, you know, every day and building this program to where it needs to go. Um, and I said, yeah, boom, mic drop and go. So risk, you know, can you run to risk, uh, in your life? So some of these things, you know, um, are what stood out, you know, in the book and I, and I didn't have this plan. I'm just going, Hey man, organically, right. What comes to the top of my mind when I think about those, uh, those book titles, Rusty. Oh, I love hearing that, you know, how you brought up about choices and risk and discipline and you know that part where I talk about welcoming adversities because adversities are inevitable. It's going to happen. And you being a mental skills coach, I mean, we have to train our players to really look forward to challenges and adversities, right? I'm going to say no. And I'm going to be one of those guys that uh, it's going to be different in this non-dogmatic, you know, uh, type of environment. Uh, I don't want to embrace adversity. I don't want to hug it. You know, I don't like it, right? Um, now, I have something on my board, you know, that well, I just erased it, you know, but <laughs> it's like trials and tribulations uh, are mandatory in your life. They're coming, right? Um, but misery is optional, right? So, no, I don't think anybody wants adversity. We don't, we don't, well, I, I don't want to hug it. I don't want to embrace it, but I know, right? And I want my young people to know that injustice, uh, that trials, tribulations, adversity is coming your way. And I also call them life quakes. You're going to experience about three to five of them, Rusty, in your life. And I'm talking about divorce, uh, financial hardship, uh, a real loss in your family. So that's coming, but misery is optional. So how do we respond? All right. And it's, you know, I'm going to respond to something rather than react. All right. So now that's where it all starts, the, the rubber meets the road. And that's where that self-discipline and that's where your habits and that's where your mindset, like in your book, that's where you talk about, I'm going to have a growth mindset and say, you know what? I'm going to step back and go, what is this teaching me? How tough am I? I got a tattoo right on the side of my 
rib cage right here, H-T-A-Y. How tough are you? So when the crap's hitting the fan and I'm just getting whacked, all right? And I have been, all right? I just look at that and I try to stand up. Nah, we're going to go. I'm going to be like Rocky Balboa in the ring going like this, all right? Come on, let's go. I can be bloodied up. I can be whatever, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to back down, all right? And that's how I'm going to approach it with the growth mindset. H-T-A-Y. I, I love that. <laughs> Check there, man. And Coach Rich, you know, another thing that I love at your games, I mean, your players always take time to really meet and uh, shake hands with the little kids. I mean, the youth. I mean, it just really helps our community, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and I've got something here on my phone, you know, and, and again, on the, but Jackie Robinson. All right. And, uh, you know, he's got this quote that had just, it always just really stood out for me, you know, and it's, and I might butcher it, you know, right now, but I can't get, bring it up. A life is not important, you know, except on the impact that it has on others, you know, and this is Jackie, right? I mean, and, and that's always just stuck with me. And, and what are we really here for? You know, um, I talk to my players about giving back. Uh, I talked about the importance of service, you know, when I was at USD and, and even here, you know, we, we worked with the Miracle League, uh, Never Quit Dreaming, you know, which is a, an organization here uh, on island, the Firebirds. Um, so our guys learn the importance of giving back uh, to the community and, uh, to, and especially anything to do with kids, you know, so we want to volunteer everywhere. Uh, we want to um, have that experience, um, of service, you know, and then taking it one step further, you know, I always say, you know, about giving back to the university. If you've got something out of this place or this program, give something back. There's a great word that I hear in Hawaii called bachi, you know, and, uh, I love that. But, you know, when I was at USD, we, we led the WCC, uh, in community service hours, uh, not only in baseball, but in any sport, you know, for a few consecutive years. And uh, that's just one of those things that's a controllable. Uh, it is uh, something that I think is, you know, my responsibility and our responsibility as leaders of young people. Coach Rich, you had invited our Little League World Champions um, to a baseball, your baseball game, and you had all of your, your entire team meet the little league world champs. How impressed were you about their victory? Oh man, that's a world series victory, man. I mean, you know, those coaches, uh, and those players, uh, representing the 808 and the pride, you know, that those kids had when they took the field to put that uni on and uh, the Hawaiian flags in the stands. I still to get chicken skin, you know, and it's just an amazing, uh, accomplishment. And the focus and dedication, you know, that those parents, you know, have had, you know, and the financial commitment and everything, really. And parents know what I'm talking about. And then to have those kids perform at that level and those coaches, you know, be able to coach them up like that, you know, adjectives really don't describe. And it was an honor to have those, to have those kids, uh, you know, here. And our guys were excited to meet them, you know. And, and that's another thing that we talk about. I learned that from my AD at USF. You know, keep your memory green, you know, and uh, all of those players at UH, they remember what it was like, you know, to be in Little League, you know, and to uh, wake up on Saturday morning, eat that cereal and put on that uniform and can't wait to get to that ballpark. So it's pretty cool. Well, Coach Rich, I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. I mean, we are all going to HTAY and uh, yeah. really want to thank you for taking time to join me today. Oh, man, it's my honor, Rusty, you know, and when we met the other day, I was really looking forward to being on your show. And uh, once again, you know, I'm very grateful, you know, and honored to be the coach here and grateful to be on your show. Thanks, Coach Rich. And Aloha. thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Coach Rich and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence.
and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.